Always keep your guard up, never let it drop. Duck, weave, move, move. Watch your opponent, fix him in your eye. Look for weakness, a crack in his armor. Then attack, attack, send him down to sleep. This city knew me, this city cheered my name. I could walk down the street and people old and young would whisper, that's him, that's Jim, Jim Driscoll. My father died in the shunting yards before I was a year old. My mother had to fight to keep me by shoveling vegetables off the ships in Cardiff docks to keep us off the streets. Everything we had, we fought for. I rose through the fairground booths, 600 fights before professionalism called. I fought in the century's first decade. British featherweight title, Commonwealth title. I went to America, took the place by storm, and as a result, they renamed me Peerless Jim. In 1910, I took a shot at the world title against a battle in New York City. They say I won seven out of 10 rounds, but he never hit the deck. And in America, that means a no decision rule. So Abe kept his title. I wanted to fight him again. A date was arranged, but it was not to be. See, I had arranged a charity match for the Nazareth Orphanage in Cardiff. And to me, people and community are worth more than titles. And I knew what it was like to be poor, and I never broke a promise. When the war broke out, I used my skills and taught others how to fight. But as the years fell away, my prime was past, and consumption took me in my 44th year knockout. In life, I stood tall, tried to be good, lost my head on occasions, disqualified once for headbutting Freddie Welsh. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. I tried to do right for my fellow man, and as a result, 100,000 people saw me to my rest. I wasn't officially world featherweight champion, but take a moment and look at my stone. The orphanage, they paid for that. And to the orphans, I was their champion. And so in death, that is what they gave me. My title.